Good morning, people. Okay, so today we are going to discuss in this brief time Bhavat Bhavam, one of my favorite topics, the higher self. What is the higher self? You have the human self, which is the embodiment of the human soul, which is striving to achieve something in this world. Okay, striving to go outside, do something from the time you get up in the morning till the time you go to bed and through years and decades you're going to strive to achieve something more. Something more always pulls you towards the outside world. So, we're going to discuss astrological aspects of how this plays out. What is Bhavad Bhavam, the house of the house or the higher self of a house itself? Is there such a thing? Let's see the terms. So, the terms used Bhavad Bhavam means literally the house of a house. That means to say, put it at the higher self of the house and all its bhavas are the characteristics. See the previous video, video on the bhavas, the perception of self, how one self sees the outside world, where one meets the outside world. What is the personal self aiming to achieve in the higher aspect of that house? I also put this one thing in between bhavad bhavam of a planet, means the higher self of a planet itself. And this we are going to cover later in later series, later videos. Personal planets like Mercury, Venus and Mars also have a higher aspect, personal aspect. The higher self of Mercury, the personal planet, is Uranus, the outer one. See my outer planet series, how they talk to each other, you'll know more. The personal, uh, the higher aspect of personal planet Venus is Neptune. And the personal planet Mars has a higher aspect of Pluto energy. These are the energetic conversations the planet has. See, planetary conversation for more. Jupiter, you got to understand, is trying to shine like the sun. So it's trying to expand everything it touches. Let it be any area of your life. Let it be wealth, education, kids, your gains, your prosperity, everything. See the previous series on the Karakas. That's why I have made this after the Karaka. What is a Karaka? You will know more. Saturn is really trying to ground and become earthly because it's a cold blank space. Saturn is a cold blank calculated space which wants to become something. The planetary energy, get the planetary energy of these things so it will be easier for you to understand. Okay, so this is the principle. The Bhavad Bhavam of house is literally derived by taking the number of steps in an anti-clockwise direction in a chart from that particular house. For example, these are the list. So the first house counted from the first house is the first house. It's the first place. So Bhavad Bhavan of the first house is the first house. For second house, it's second counted from the second, which becomes the third house. For the third house, it becomes third house counted three, three places from the third house, fifth house. Similarly, for fourth, it is fourth place from the fourth house, which is the seventh. And so on and so forth, it goes to up till... 12th house. Now you can see a pattern here. The first 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 and 11 are repeated two times. So the house is first, which is the house of self. The house number 3, which is the house of skills, education, communication. The fifth house, which is the house of creativity, education. The seventh house, which is the house of wisdom. The ninth house, which is the Sorry, 7th house which is the house of spouse, ninth house which is the house of wisdom, 11th house which is the house of gains. These are repeated two times in the 6th, in all the 12. So basically the higher self of everyone, everyone is in 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 and 11 houses because that's where the higher self is landing. How, what, what does this mean? Let's take one by one. First house. So first house talks to itself and the seventh house, seven places from the seventh house, which you can see here, seven places from the seventh house is the first house again. What this means, self as a reflection of itself, other as a higher reflection of self. So what you're experiencing through the spouse, through your partner is basically yourself in another form. It is showing one part of you. So it's all reality is a reflection. And this is showing physically even on the on the chart in a Bhavad Bhavam concept. So all you are experiencing is a higher aspect of yourself. 
also means he is the critical one a good partnership in life will greatly enhance your sense of self and to shine in this world this is why the partnerships become very important for everyone you have a good partner a good spouse she will take he or she will take you to greater heights in understanding yourself and shining in this world a bad one will bring that down very important why partnerships are so important the second house second place from second house is the third house and so is the eighth place from the eighth house so bhavat bhavam of the eighth house the higher self of the eighth house is in this now what is second and eighth house is the house of gain second house is of taurus it's of gain fixed stability material gains this is of loss loss of material gain of spirituality occult this is your wealth this is other people's wealth so this is the house of if you see my earlier series it's a house of stability which we think of stability instability the eighth house is very unstable second house is very stable so house of gain stability and sensual and the house of loss spiritualism and sexual of material dimension really give you the true wisdom and refined skills in your life to carry out whatever your life path in this world will be determined and your skills will keep getting refined through life based upon the attributes of the second house and the how the your eighth house is playing up in your chart so examine the second house and the eighth house so what skills this person will eventually keep developing throughout life this goes on throughout life very good to understand let's see the fifth house this fifth house bhavat bhavam is the third house higher self is the fifth house not only that the ninth house of wisdom higher self is education so skills and educate and wisdom make a good make the real education the real value of education which and creativity is which is the fifth house will come from developing your skills earlier on in life very early as early as you can develop you want to become an athlete or you want to become a doctor it's all the same so that will contribute to what you do eventually as a educated person as a qualified person engineer doctor lawyer doesn't matter what it is the wisdom that you gain from your surroundings and yourself will also contribute to how you good and educated person you are so the house of higher talents higher remember we are not talking about the self we are talking about the higher self the house of higher talents gained house of gain and the house of wisdom gained through life provide real creativity education educating your children and with your wisdom and life lessons this is how parents will educate how will you take this fifth house to your kids as parents how will that be derived from the balance of these because this feeds into this think of it as this feeds into this this is the contributor to it at a higher level now take the seventh house seventh house is the, the bhavat bhavam of 10th house is the seventh house the bhavat bhavam of fourth house is also the seventh house so both of them converging in one place which means 10th house is of career 4th house is of home and family so your upbringing childhood home fourth house your mother and your career path 10th house will determine how you treat your spouse who in turn determines your own sense of worth we saw that in the first bhava so you see how these are all linked this and this contribute to this who in turn contributes to you interesting next the ninth house the higher self of 11th house 11 places from itself this is 12th place is 11th place so we can go this way i am written it just anti clockwise because you got to move anti clockwise those are the rules the fifth from the fifth house lands in the ninth place the 11th from the 11th house lands up in the same place ninth house 11th house is the house of gains fifth house is the house of education again we saw how third house and eighth house play into 
uh, second house and third house play into uh, sorry second house and eighth house play into the third house that same third house puts it into fifth house fifth house puts it into ninth house one area of life feeds into feeds its wisdom into another area of life think of it this way it's easier to follow that way so your gains 11th house social network of friends 11th house community 11th house along with your higher learning from the 5th house which we covered in the bhavad home of the 3rd house which lands in the 5th house three places 2 3 1 2 3 so this your gains in social network of friends community etc of 11th along with the higher learning from 5th house will determine your higher wisdom, learning and philosophy of life. What do you consider life as worth living? What is your philosophy of life? How do you carry out your life on the what basis of what beliefs? What psychology? What psyche? What do you adopt as saying, this is me, this is who I am, this is what, is, what I am in the world, etc, etc. That is determined by all of this. Right, and lastly, now let's see how the 11th house plays up. The 12th place from the 12th house, the higher self of the 12th house of spirituality, loss, isolation, leaving the material realm, lands in the 11th house. That means the 12th place from the 12th house is the 11th house. So is the 6th place from the 6th house. This is very profound because your service, 6th and 12th are the house of service. This 6th house you are pretty much serving yourself. It's a materialistic realm. The twelfth house is where you are losing all of that and leaving the material realm. So this is service in spirituality, this is service in material. That's why they are opposites. So that, if you can see playing out, it will land both of them in the eleventh house. That means your service in the material world and sense of spirituality and detachment will determine what you really gain from this world. Eleventh house is a house of gains. Okay. So this needs a lot of reflection and you can uh, derive a lot of um, attributes of how Bhavad Bhavan plays out depending upon the Bhava. See my previous videos on the Bhavas for a clarity on what aspects are playing into what other aspects of your life. Now how does this play into life paths? How to find a life path? See the Ascendant series for more. For an Aries person, which is ruled by Mars, the first Bhava will help them find their life path. For a Taurus is second, for the Gemini it's third, and so on and so forth. For all the Vifa Pisces, it goes to twelfth Bhava. This will help them find their life purpose. This is even used for predictions, but you can use it more for first determining what your kind of path is. And of course you have to see where the planets are solidified. See the energy of Ascendant is a life theme that carries on, irrespective of where the planets are. The planets just seem to solidify the karma. Planets are the solid aspects wherever they get placed. It shows just exaltation and debilitation. It shows what is higher energy in your life and what area you should avoid. Pitfalls you should avoid. Okay. Right.